Islam isn't a monolith. It's not like everyone is just Muslim. There's so many different types of, of Muslims. You can't paint all the Muslims with a single brush or with a single stroke. I think it's a really interesting time for Muslim millennials especially in the United States. I just happened to go to the whitest neighborhood in Maryland and so as a result of that I got a lot of why is your skin like that? Why do you not speak English properly? What is that stuff you have on your hands? It was henna. It was for Eid. When I started eighth grade, I interacted with people who weren't Muslim who were starting to ask me, what is Islam? What is, why are you wearing that headscarf? It kind of became my identity that people are constantly asking me these questions and that's what I'm known for, the person who is almost an ambassador for the religion. I think one of my favorite memories growing up Muslim was Ramadan. Ramadan is basically the Muslim month, of, holy Muslim month of fasting. We would get up before sunrise, my parents, my grandparents, my siblings, we would have a meal. It was a very uh, special time to be with family and to also reflect on faith and I think that's why faith and family seem really intertwined to me as well. My earliest memory of being Muslim is actually, I remember being a, a young child just sitting in, the, in my lawn and looking up at the sky and kind of just talking to God one on one because my mother used to tell me the stories of the prophets all the time and they just really stuck with me because they're just really interesting stories. I study international relations and diplomacy with a minor in Middle Eastern studies. So in any of my classes when the Middle East anything about the Middle East usually comes up or anything about Islam, um, everyone in the room turns to me. I welcome all the questions. I never reject any of them because I would rather answer them than have them seek other sources that might, might not be as accurate. I'm a physics student and so I'm obsessed with the stars and astronomy. One of the things that strengthened religion for me was its relation to science. The fact that it's a religion that's based on knowledge and constantly seeking knowledge. It's encouraging to know that you don't just have to learn about religion. You know, you can learn about anything in the entire world and that would be kind of an act or a prayer towards, you know, the religion. When you have a crisis of science versus religion, that what better way to kind of remedy that than to look into the history of your religion and find out that it encourages it even further. And so I think that that is something that has been really important in shaping my future and what I'm interested in. I go to the business school in my university and so I walked into one of my more professional classes where I was dressed in like very in a business suit and walked in and people were kind of like you want to go into this professional industry you're in like the business school but you have like a Muslim identity like how do those things go together and like how do they not go together like this is my religious life this is my personal life and this is my professional life like those things are totally like mixable. It's not a dual identity, it's the one identity that is a um, combination of both East and West, you know. I think the biggest misconception that I've come across would have to be just that I'm oppressed. Like, for one, like, I really dare somebody to oppress me. Like, that's kind of my attitude. A lot of people feel uncomfortable when Muslim women don't fit into that box of how they want to believe Muslim women look or act or sound. And that's something that we're trying to break out of. Muslim girl. Is, it's kind of at the perfect intersection based off of a very imperfect reality, which is something special in and of itself. You know, there's something beautiful in fighting something, I guess, even if that ugly thing is hate.